We're kicking off our new midterm media segment. Each week we'll analyze how the issues shaping the fall election are being covered, how they're helping or hurting candidates, and vote on who won the week on the media battlefield. President Obama tried pushing economic issues on Labor Day while John McCain was among the Republicans slamming the president over ISIS. America deserves a raise. Folks are doing very well on Wall Street. They're doing very well in the corporate boardrooms. Give America a raise. I was astounded when the President of the United States uh, said that uh, the, the world has always been messy and it's been uh, accentuated by social media. Um, that means that the President of the United States is either in denial or overwhelmed. So how is the coverage affecting the fall elections? Joining us now, Bob Cusack, editor-in-chief of The Hill, and Amy Walter, national editor of The Cook Political Report and a former political director for ABC News. So, Amy, Obama talking about boosting the minimum wage and ripping Republicans on Labor Day. Did the coverage last more than, what, half a news Two, cycle? I don't even think it lasted <laughs> half a news cycle. I think it lasted for about 14 seconds. And, and this is really the struggle for Democrats right now. They want to make this election like 2012 election, a contrast between what Democrats, like the president there, was saying about the minimum wage and the income inequality and a Republican message that they say is really focused on the 1%. They haven't been able to do that because lots of things getting in the way of that message. Right, but I thought the polls show that the top issue that Americans really, really care about is the economy, and that's not reflected in the coverage. No, that's right. But, and that's why and President Obama needs the base to show up, and that's why he's going to these issues. We're going to talk, he's going to talk about a lot in the fall, but is it resonating? That's a big mm -hmm. question. Speaking of resonating, uh, you know, every day you turn on the television and we're hearing about ISIS, yeah. the president's handling of it, whether we're at war, the beheading of a second American journalist, as I mentioned earlier. Does the coverage of that resonate in a midterm election? Well, here's where it's resonating, and, and I think part of the reason that you're seeing the president's approval ratings go south, uh, not just nationally, but in a lot of these battleground states, mm -hmm. is this relentless focus on how bad things look overseas, right? And it gets reflected then in the president's own approval ratings. He's the sense of he's not taking leadership. Where is he? What are we doing? What is the strategy? So every time bad news happens and the way it has piled on to this president in August, it has the, the, uh, the effect of really bringing his own approval ratings down, which of course then trickle down into every single competitive congressional race. I would say, Bob, that this coverage of ISIS and Syria and all of that dominated this week more than any other yes. story this yes. side of Joan Rivers' yes. death. Yes. <laughs> no, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, terror politics is, is, is back, and we haven't seen that in a while. And, and that's what the, that's what the and president had a very tough August. He made some gaffes. That hurts Democrats. Um, so he needs to have a better fall if Democrats are going to hold on to the Senate, no doubt about it. Um, and now the, the news that's broken in the last 24 hours, of course, uh, and I hear you mix it up on this, is the immigration right. delay. Um, and, and I'm wondering, does that now take that off the table, at least in terms of media coverage in September or October? Or are we going to be hearing a lot from journalists and pundits about how ticked off both sides are because the Republicans say, well, he's still going to do it, and it's raw politics, and the advocates of immigration reform feel really let down. So over the last few weeks, since the crisis really m moved up um, on the consciousness of Americans, you saw at least five Senate races where there were ads by the Republican on this border crisis, right? So it was already becoming part of the campaign messaging. Um, you saw issues about illegal immigrants getting access to things like health care, things like that. So I think it will still be an issue that Republicans use. However, it won't be, to Bob's point, one of those issues that really ginned up the Republican base. Had the president gone in and said, yes, I'm taking executive action, that would have given Republicans who are already more enthusiastic to vote than Democrats one more reason to be more in engaged and encouraged to go to vote. How much yeah. will the, the Hill continue to cover it? How much will the press continue to cover it in these next two months? Well, Howard, I mean, the Congress is coming back. So we're going to be talking to those lawmakers who wanted action. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the media loves stories about Democrat criticizes Democrat, or Republican criticizes Republican. And that's what we're going to see. The red state, I think the bottom line, I agree with definitely. love intra-party Warfare. We actually do. Oh, it's yes, much more yes. interesting. <laughs> but but I do. It, it is one of those things where the red state Democrats didn't want this to happen, who are facing tough elections, and that's why it didn't happen. The Ferguson violence is over, thankfully. Uh, but this week we had Attorney General Eric Holder announcing a civil rights investigation of the police department in that Missouri town on a much broader scale than just looking at Michael Brown's death. 
Does this coverage of this issue um, pump up Democratic voters? I don't think so. I think that, again, this is one of those issues that, the investigation issue, where it's going to take a long time before we get an answer. So this is not something that it, we're going to see, you know, just sort of pop up so in the October. Urgency so is the urgency gone. is definitely gone. Yeah. And I think in talking to folks, too, um, about this issue, especially those who are African American, the frustration, I think, for many of them that the president did not make stronger statement. That, that would have really pumped up, if you're talking about using it as an issue to encourage voters. Urgency gone for the media now that we don't have cameras there every night looking at people, uh, some of them looting stores and engaging yes. in other kinds of disobedience? I agree. Until we get some answers from the investigation, Eric Holder, very active on this issue. Some wanted the president to, to go to Ferguson. Right. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, I think it fades at least for now. Okay. So what we're going to do each week here is ask each of you who won the week in terms of media coverage, Republicans or the Democrats, uh, in terms of the way the prominence of the story has gotten, the way they played. Amy, you first. Well, I think Republicans, and to your point, the entire week was about ISIS, and it was not about the things that Democrats want to talk about. The, the president and the vice president, both on Labor Day, started off with a message about the economy. They were hoping that that would be the discussion uh, for this week. Instead, it was all about terrorism and whether the president has a plan to fight it. That does not help Democrats. Bob, who won the media week? I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to go with the Democrats this week just because we, there have been a lot of stories about the race in Kansas. And any time Republicans have to worry about a Senate race in Kansas, that's good for the Democrats. Also, Democrats who are running were able to criticize the president on ISIS. In the long term, I think that, that hurts. But for the week, uh, I'll go with the Dems. All right, we have our first disagreement yeah, in our like new it. segment. Uh, just for those who haven't been obsessively following it, the Democratic candidate in Kansas tried to drop out to help an independent candidate who uh, the Democrats hope will defeat incumbent Senator Pat Roberts. But then the Republican Secretary of State, who's a Pat Roberts ally, said, no, no, you can't take your name off the ballot. So it's all very confusing. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about it more next week. Bob Cusack and Amy Walter, thanks very thanks. much for stopping by.